Hi guys, this is the second tutorial in the series. Uh, I'm gonna go over display objects. A display object is anything that can be shown on the screen. So, and and they're all subclasses of a class called SP display object. As you can see in this diagram here, um, SP quad and SP image, an SP button and SP text field. Those are all subclasses of SP display object. And uh, yeah. So, SP Display Object is an abstract class that basically sets the standards for any display objects. And uh, an SP Display Object container is something that holds all the display objects. So, it could be something like an SP Sprite or an SP Stage. Now, as I said, um, the SP Display Object is an abstract class. So, you can't really you can't have an SP Display Object, but you can have any of its subclasses. And since there's sub and since a uh, image or quad is a subclass, it inherits many properties such as position, size, rotation, color, etc. So yes, um, and a display object container. There's pretty much two kinds: an SP sprite and an SP stage. Uh, they do pretty much the same thing, and you shouldn't really worry about those things. So yeah, and there's also a display tree, and you should keep in mind that the order that you add objects in then that's the layer they're gonna be on so uh, you're gonna see that later in our example but let's say I had an image and I put that first then I put a text then I put a text box then the text box is gonna show on top of the image but if I put the image after the text box then it would the image would just hide the text box so keep that in mind and now the last thing I'm going to show you is the coordinate system, and uh, the coordinate system is each each container has its own coordinate system. So, and Sparrow's coordinate system starts at the top left. You should keep that in mind. So, if, let's say I wanted to do 200, like uh, let's say 200 x by 100 y. So I would go 200 to the right and 100 down. And so this is the red pin is 200 by 100, and the blue pin is where it originated. So now that you know the coordinate system, uh, there's also many methods that the display object container has, such as adding childs, um, seeing if a container has a child, um, how many children are there, etc. Okay, now I'm going to show you a real example on how to use the display objects in these containers in their containers so um, go to the place where you downloaded Sparrow uh, I just put it to my desktop for clarity and then the folder you download Sparrow click on samples click on scaffold I mean sorry not scaffold click on barebone source and open the Xcode project okay so now um, once you loaded it you should see like you should see like a group called barebone open that and you should see a group called class and open that okay so yeah once you've opened the scaffold then you should see something like this um so let's read through this code so we're initializing an object called sp quad which is a shape a rectangle sorry and we're initializing it giving it the name quad equals sp quad quad width 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 100 and height 100 so we're just auto we're initializing a quad that's 100 pixels wide 100 pixels tall okay then since this inherits from sp display object where um we're getting its color so so we're just sending the color property to 0x ff 0, 00 you can use hex codes you just proceed them by 0x so yeah so this is going to give us red so then quad dot x is 50 and so it's going to be at 50 wide 50 to the right and quad dot y is 50 so 50 down all right now the most important part is self add child quad so when we say self add child quad we're basically adding this quad to ourself but what is this self if you go back to game dot header you're going to see that this game file is really um a subclass of SP stage and the SP stage just like a sprite it's a container and it holds all the objects so instead of having to write 
SP stage, add child. We just put self. So self add child quad. And let's run this in the simulator. And uh, I'll be back when it does. And it ran in the simulator. And so you should just see a black background with a red square on top. A red, yeah, red square. So you can see it has 100, 100 by 100 size. It's red color. It's 50 to the right and 50 down. And it's on our main stage. So that shows that we ran it correctly. Okay, so you can just close that app. And let's go. Let's, now I'm going to show you how to add a sprite. So get rid of all these comments. Um, get rid of those. And I'm going to show you how to make a sprite. Most of the time, sprites are really just for organization. And I'm going to show you how to make one. So, SP sprite. Uh, my sprite equals open bracket SP sprite sprite with. I mean, yeah. Um, no, sorry. SP sprite in it. Wait, um. Ah, sorry. Um, sorry. So SP sprite my sprite equals. Double bracket SV sprite alloc in it uh, close bracket um, then semicolon. So basically, we're storing this in memory. So yeah, we have our sprite, my sprite. Now you don't have to, have to do anything to that sprite, but instead of doing self add child, since we're not adding it to our own oh, we're, since we're not adding it to our own to the base stage, we're adding it to my sprite. Okay. And one last thing I forgot to do is self add child my sprite. So yeah, we forgot to add, we have to add our sprite to the main stage. Okay, so now if you run that again, you're going to see pretty much no difference because we just added it to uh, another sprite, but that sprite is on the main sprite, so it's showing. Mostly sprites are just used for organization. But they come in handy when you have more advanced applications. So yes, anyways, now I'm going to show you how to make images and how to do um, text fields. So yeah, you can X out of the app again. So this is how you do a text field. So SP text field. Um, you can use Xcode's autocomplete. Auto -complete. Star text, which is called my text equals open bracket sp text field text field with text field with text no yeah sorry text field text field with width so how wide do you want to be the text field let's make it let's just make it 50 and with height let's make it 20 okay and then text is an ns string so put the at in a quote Hello world. And end the string and end the bracket. Okay. So we're just telling the compiler. Hey, this is a text field. It's 50 wide, 50 high. And the text is hello world. Okay. But now, if by default, it's going to make our text black. But since our background is black, it's not going to show. So let's change the color. So my text that color equals 0x fff fff that's the hex code for white let's also move it more let's move it let's just leave it at 0 by z. let's make the my text let's make the x the same as the quad so 50 my text dot y equals 50 okay now my sprite add child my text so now we're adding it to my sprite just like we added the quad. Okay. It was not so hard, was it? Um, okay. So let's run this and see what happens. Whoa, look at this. <laughs> so we made the text field and we added it. The text is white. And since we added the text field after we added the rectangle, it showed up on top. Which is nice. All right. So now let's. So you can see it's like white at 50 by 50, and it has the width and text we wanted. Only problem is we didn't make it wide enough, so the he full hello world text didn't show up. But that's okay. Okay. So um, get rid of that. X out of that. 
No, last part I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you how to add an image. So I'm gonna go to do the Sparrow website. I'm gonna open their little Sparrow image. And I'm gonna save it to my desktop. So I'm gonna call it Brick and save. All right. You can use almost any file type. You can use any file type that's recognized by the iPhone on Sparrow. So yeah, I got a PNG file which is perfect. Now I'm going to copy it to my resources folder. And make sure you check copy into destinations folder. Okay. Now I've copied it to my resources folder. So now Sparrow will recognize this bird.png. Now I'm going to actually add it. So do sp image. Uh, let's call it bird equals um, sp image. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, open bracket sp image image with tech which with contents of file. Uh, at uh, codes. Make sure it's ca like case. Make sure you type in it with the appropriate case, cause the iPhone is very case sensitive. So yeah, uh, the file is called bird.png. Close the codes. Close the bracket. Semicolon. All right. So now we're telling Sparrow, hey, there, there's an image, and initiate it with the with the contents of the file bird. Okay. So we have an image called bird. Let's put it at the same tech, the same x and y as our old as the quad in the text field. So bird.x equals 50, bird.y equals 50. Now the last part you might guess is my sprite add child my uh it's called add child bird. Alright. So we should be done now. Just we add the sprite, everything seems good, no mistakes. Run this in simulator and I'll be back when it runs. And look what happened, we got a bird. <laughs> got a nice bird there. And it's really, since the image had some transparency, it didn't start, like the image didn't really start from the top corner, so that's why it looks a little bit off. But other than that, the image worked perfectly. You see the nice bird. And since we added it on top last, it's on top of the text and the quad. So I hope you guys understood display objects, which are images or text boxes, anything that's on the screen. And a display container, object container, like a SP sprite or an SP quad, SP stage, those hold the display objects. And last thing I want you to remember that it matters what order you put the objects in. So thanks for watching, and I hope you understood. If you miss have any misunderstandings, feel free to go to the Sparrow Wiki. They explain it in more detail. Or and feel free to leave a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.